Yeah, started recording. Uh, let's put you far away from there. Try to get as much, so I can get a lot of screen time. I just finished putting on my makeup. No, I didn't, but I'm not lucky enough to have a makeup artist, nowhere to be on a terrestrial channel. Then uh, I hear the, I'm not sure, but like the, the meteorologist, they bank. They make the most money out of the whole news team. So I've heard. Anyways, welcome everybody to Nothing to See Here. And as you can see, there's nothing to see here. It's just me, David. Today is uh, Tuesday, the 11th of April, Martes 11 de Abril. Remember, we're in Florida. I'm in Florida. I don't know where you are. And I wrote down some temperatures here in our our beautiful city of Pembroke Pines, according to the Weather Channel. 68 degrees Fahrenheit, 20 degrees Celsius. I looked up the feel like, and it says 69. But this wind gust going on, it just finished raining. It it feels lower than 68. And then just for fun. I wrote down the weather for the three other cities that I have on my phone. And I wanted to share that with you because I have nothing to say that this channel is literally nothing. This is like if science filled was on steroids. In Barranquilla, which is where I was born. A beautiful place, I love it. It's 78 degrees Fahrenheit, like we say here in the States. Over there, it's 26 degrees. But of course, over there, oh, I forgot the time. It's like 5 to 7, 655. The sunrise, according to sunrise, sunset.org, is supposed to be at 702. So it'll be 7.02 a.m. And it's already light, whatever. Barranquilla is the second city I have on there. They're, they're just in alphabetical order, except for my location that they put that first. The third city I have is Barcelona, which is in Catalonia, España, or Catalonia, Spain. Over there, it's already 12, it's gonna be, it's like 1255, it's gonna be 1300 hours in it might be 1300 hours now i don't know i started recording i forgot to look at time so yeah they're they, they're they already they're taking their naps because i don't know if they do that anymore like they work and then they're closed from like 12 to 2 and that's when to eat lunch and then take their siesta or nap it's actually good for you so over in barcelona at 66 fahrenheit like we say here in the States, 19 degrees Celsius, which I imagine they say over there in Europe. And over there, and maybe, maybe they do it in traditional pueblos, maybe not in the city, but there's not that many pueblos left. Almost everybody migrated to like Madrid or another place with, with more opportunities. And then the last city I have listed on my phone is El Segundo, California, where right now it is 3.55 a.m. or possibly 4 a.m., 400 hours right now. And over there, it's a nice and cool 50 53 degrees Fahrenheit, 11 degrees Celsius. So, it's been raining a lot. Therefore, I haven't been having to wake up to water the lawn this morning I just woke up naturally and not at 420, which is the time I said the alarm, but at 430. I just woke up and I said, I'm gonna wait. I'm no point in going back to sleep. I'm just gonna be tossing and turning and waiting for the, like my alarm to go off. I think I said it this morning for 555, 555. And whatever. I think I'm gonna redo my resume because 
not that it's not professional, but it's just they look through so many of those every day. I should just send two in. Why not? I was trying to find out how much it rained in the past 24 hours because uh, Dad said he'd take care of the lawn for me not to worry about it, but I have no choice but to worry about it because uh, I need to make sure everything's taken care of here because essentially I'm 60 years old, I should have moved out like 40 years ago, but I'm still here. And uh, I mean, I do pick up after mom, dad not so much. He doesn't really leave anything behind, just water bottles, but he'll pick them up. Dad is more, a little bit more active, drives a lot more. Mom is, um, cooks real well. She enjoys it. She's always dreamt of opening up a restaurant. I told her that her and my aunt, my tia Ethel, they, they should open up a restaurant together because my aunt cooks good too. My tia Ethel. Um, so yeah, I went to a couple websites to try to see how much it's raining in the past 24 hours. I had no luck. I went to this one called the weathernetwork.com it was just showing past precipitations but in months they said for the month the month of march it was two inches i went to this other one called localconditions.com where they have you can choose a date and then they have graphs and like like excel graphs where it says um for every like five minutes of the day and then increments or five minute increments or maybe a particular time when it started to do like something changed drastically and then that's uh that would be row a right or whatever or column a i mean i'm sorry and then the rows are the times columns b c d e f are you know what uh temperature barometer wind gust blah blah, blah. and then one of them is uh pre 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 precipitation within the past 24 hours but it's completely wrong because I looked up um, uh, yesterday and, and this morning as well. This morning obviously started at, at zero hours and today is the 11th, like I said, and it, it's all blank for precipitation. So it's wrong. It's gotta be wrong because it's been raining like a, someone who loves moms. Um, Today's bulk pickup, I got most of it out. I was in the process of getting it out, then I started raining, so I ran in. But I had made three little stacks because I cut it up with the chainsaw, the big pieces, so I, it would be manageable to take out. And also when it's out there, it's not gonna look like big feet. Like it, technically, you're not supposed to put construction material for bulk, if I remember correctly. But someone told me this isn't, isn't construction material. Construction material is usually like, it's like concrete or like a bathtub or, you know, things of that nature, but maybe a refrigerator. I don't know. That I'll tell you one thing. I've seen that truck, the bulk pickup truck. It's pretty cool. It's got like a movable claw. Well, first of all, it's got the things that are lower down to the ground so that the vehicle won't tilt, you know, so that it, 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 it um, I guess, what what would that do? That would uh, apply force downward. It would kind of like, just give the vehicle more leverage. So in case it has to pick up anything heavy, it won't tilt to the side and it won't tilt over. So they do that first. It's operated by a single individual. That's why sometimes it might take forever if there's a lot of people that put out bulk on that day. And then he just moves the claw with like a little joystick. It's like he's playing a game. It's pretty cool. That would be a neat career to have. Um, yeah, speaking of which, I replied at Publix. I ask all of you to pray and or visualize 
me getting this job. I did a resume, but I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna redo it. The one I did, I did it how I wanted to do it. And it's more like a letter than a resume, to be honest. Maybe I'll show it to you guys, I don't know. I did it on the Chromebook. I didn't do it on the iPhone, obviously. It's just I've read in resumes. If it's been, if it's something you did over 15 years ago, don't include it. Past 15 years, let's see. We're in 2023. So going back 15 years, that would be 2008. In 2008, I was still working. I was, I was working for Pembroke Lakes Optical. That's around the time when um, they, they got the, the new owner who was an optometrist. He took over the practice. It was pretty cool. The previous owner uh, just abandoned it. it. He was in debt and he just disappeared. And he fled and he left his wife, which was terrible. She was a beautiful woman. She had a beautiful heart. They were, they were Haitian. He was an ophthalmologist by trade, but he didn't get his, uh, he didn't do the uh, medical exam here, like I guess to become certified in the States. So he decided to go into managerial position or administrative position and try to run practices. He had two locations, one here in Pembroke Pines and one I believe in Aventura. The Pembroke Pines location has two of the chairs that you sit in and they have all the equipment to, so they can check your, um, you know, uh, your eyesight, and then they have the machine where they can either like do a little puff or they can do a little drop, either or. It's to dilate your pupil, and then they look in the back of your retina, and then by doing so, they can tell if you like have diabetes or even I think blood pressure. They can tell a lot. That's why. I If you have insurance and you and you have benefits to do like all kinds of preventive care, this is my suggestion. Uh, when the month of your birthday, try to make it a habit that during the month of your birthday, make all the appointments for all the doctors or spe or specialists, I should say. Obviously your primary care physician first in case you need referrals according to if your insurance requires it. And then see as many doctors as you can for preventive care because you're one of the lucky ones that has insurance. And it gets me so upset when I see people who have health insurance and they do not use their benefit. It gets me, it almost gets me angry to be honest because I've been trying to do some research, trying to find out why the uh, registered pharmacist whom I used to go to was able to offer me my medication at about nearly one third of the price of where he eventually, when he retired, he gave like his, um, you know, like the, like the list of the names of his patients, he gave it to the pharmacy where I'm going to now. But pharmacies, they order their products, like the medication they need, not from the manufacturers, but from a wholesaler. There's like three big ones in these, in the, in these states, maybe four. And I'm sure there's probably a couple independent little ones, I don't know. So the wholesalers, they'll charge their price and then the pharmacy has to charge accordingly. But, it's just, you know, they think of anything that they can to stimulate the economy, which is good, creates jobs, keep people busy. I'll tell you one thing though. I have, I've been without work. I've been kind of like a stay at home dad. I have time to do this right now, which I'm doing. I'm, make it, I'm just gonna make it one scene because after this, I gotta go start preparing um, the princess her book bag. Just this week, she's just gonna. I'm gonna give her fruit, and uh, one more day, I'll give her string cheese before my queen eats it all.
so she at least has a chance to eat string cheese one more time. But, yeah, so yeah, that's just that. It just gets me upset. You know, the medication, it should not have to be like that. They, I, was, I applied for the Affordable Care Act for one of those plans, and they said, are you going to make $15,000 next year? Talking about this year, this calendar year, 2023. I said, I don't know. I, I barely averaged 5,000 in like the last like, um, like eight years. So I'm not sure. I should have just lied like someone advised me to and like alleged, someone allegedly did and had gotten insurance because mental health is covered 100% under all the plans. It's just an automatic thing because, you know, eventually, essentially, majority of people who suffer from mental health issues, they, they will self-medicate. And the problem that's going on right now is buying drugs off the streets because of uh, the poor care now provided it in like professional, professional medical settings, pharmacies, you what now you have it because of the, the poor system, the way that they designed it, they're trying to fix a problem, but at the same time, they're almost creating another one. You know, I've been, I know I talk about this a lot, but it's true. It's, I can make a phone call and have some type of, you know, illegal, like the cops like to call it narcotic, but you know, it could be a stimulant or, maybe like a benzodiazepine or I don't know, uh, the real narcotic, heroin, you know, good luck. Everything is fentanyl now. They even made a sketch on it on SNL, which I'm probably gonna link in the description. So please read the description about how they want, in the, the gist of the sketches, two gentlemen are on vacation. They visited a nightclub. One of the gentlemen says to the other one, you know, it would make this night a little bit better if we could get a little bit of, uh... So then the other gentleman with him goes, Oh, what do you mean, like, drugs? And then, um, out of nowhere, usually in, like, you know, clubs, you know, like, nightclubs that are meant to be, like, you know, they try to make them... But they, actually, most of the majority of them, like I said, economy, jobs everywhere. They have someone that just sits in the bathroom with, like, mints, uh, colognes, maybe like wipes or condoms, whatever, whatever, you know, things that they, they'll sell to you. They also, as you walk out, they'll hand you like a, you know, whether a, a, a towel, if they use towels, if it's a really tiny place or, or napkins for you to dry your hands. And then they have the little tip jar. So they, I'm sure they get paid uh, the minimum wage for a, a, a tip worker and then they make whatever they make from um, people who are whatever. So anyways, in this sketch, that per the person who does that job, it's funny, he comes up behind him and then he says, hey, you guys looking for some cocaine? And they're like, huh? Do you guys want to get high? <laughs> and the way he says it is funny. And um, I'm just gonna summarize the skit. You can watch it. A whole bunch of other one people, you know, dealers come, and then they keep asking each one, is it pure? And then they all use metaphors to say how pure their stuff is. And then in the very end, you have to catch what they say. They say, but does it have, and then I'm not gonna mention it, I'll let you watch and see it. Does it have the, what's being mixed now with all of the, you know, everything you buy, even like cocaine, something that was made for like rich people. I hear that, no, well, I'm sure that's been, been, been cut with this too, but I've heard that crack cocaine, someone told me that they feel that they felt like it was mixed with some of this other stuff. And I don't want to say the name, y'all, everybody knows what it is but I want you to watch the sketch.
It's Saturday Night Live. It's been one of my favorite shows since forever. I've always said if I ever go to New York and I go to Broadway, that's the one show I want to watch. It's Saturday Night Live. So, haven't been. Uh, I'm sure I would enjoy it as long as I bring my medication because eight million people all in one place or, or like the densest areas I would be I'm gonna wanna like just go back to my hotel room <laughs> and just watch TV but you know thank goodness you know that I'm able to get a little side jobs and be able to at least pay my you know doctor visit whatever can't even pay for my meds anymore. I have to borrow money and then pay it back. It's just a vicious cycle. I think I, I got into debt a little while back because I splurged on something on myself. And then now I'm not up to date. And, um, but it's necessary because like I've mentioned before, if I if I'm, can't care for myself and I can't be healthy and well, how can I care for another person? So most importantly, the princess. How can I care for the princess? My parents can still care for themselves. They're not that old, but I do try to, you know, be polite and, you know, whenever I have an opportunity to either maybe like offer something like, if they need something from the store or I even try to offer dad if he wants breakfast or if he wants me to get the pot start to boiling he always says no I think he just likes to be independent but I just do it just to be polite and um, I'm not gonna lie I also enjoy it I do enjoy making food at least for the princess the most and um it's just another thing i want to mention to everybody if like how shakita said in one of her songs i forgot how the verse goes but before you go say something bad about somebody try to first start by saying something bad about yourself like critique yourself first then maybe critique the individual or what I learned in psychology, or I don't even know if it's psychology, you might just been in life. Before you critique somebody who it doesn't take criticism well, start with a little bit of praise and then work your way into saying, but you could have done this a little different. It's just, there's different ways you can talk to people, you can approach them and you can get different results. If you try to be like, um, demanding which is another way of being like kind of like bossy people are gonna technically essentially kind of like dislike you they're gonna when you ask them favors they're gonna be like who does this person think they are you know so like for instance when i ask dad like if i need to go somewhere i unless I really, really need to go, which most of the times you don't. Most of the times you, you can just stay at home. You really have everything you need at home. Every, we just like to go out because we live in an affluent country. But unless, unless I really need to go somewhere, what I'll do is I'll just say, Dad, are you going anywhere today? Wait for his answer and if he says yes, I'll wait to hear if one of those places is where, where I gotta go or nearby where I gotta go. And then, um, then, then I'll slide it in. I'm like, okay, well, can I go with you to go to, cause I gotta stop by here or whatever. But if he says he's gotta go uh, up north, let's say where my sisters live, they live North Broward now or whatever, or mid, one minute, no one north whatever reason, I guess they didn't like Southwest Broward anymore. And um, 
then they're not going in the direction I need to go. So I, I just don't have a ride. Because if you don't really need it and and you're gonna go, don't go demanding others to do stuff for you that you don't really need. You know, life is hard for everybody. Now imagine it for somebody who's got a lot of things that they gotta do and then they also have to meet your demands for things that you want, you know? I'll just leave with this. I think it's Psalm number 23 and it starts with this. It says, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. And that's the word. The word is the word and it really you know, belief, like I've said, is a very, very, very important. That might be the fifth force, actually. <laughs> now that I talk, now that I'm thinking about science, the strong and the weak nuclear force, gravity, electromagnetism. And what was the fourth one? Oh no, I think it's just strong, weak, gravity, and electromagnetism. And they're looking for the fifth one which they don't know yet, scientists, they say that's, that the next Nobel Prize for science is going to go to that. I haven't gone to university, but I, mean, I believe they're doing a lot of studies out there to try to measure, to try, well, first to try to find more, um, more items within the nucleus of an atom, you know, like uh, the so-called flavor, like all, all of the uh, quarks or whatever they're called and their flavors. They're trying to find a new one, I believe. They're also trying to do experiments so that they can try to figure out what dark matter is because it comprises like X amount of the universe. But these are all things that really don't, don't have to do anything with our day-to-day -day life. These are just things that are there to keep academics busy but essentially they can lead to the next big giant step forward in the development of our species just like how we had the renaissance how we had the industrial and the, uh, revolution and then how we had like now the technology information age you know all those things help the advancement of our of our species so we just gotta find it we gotta experiment maybe we'll find it you know by looking hard and searching nowadays it's teams of people you know it's scientists from all over the world a lot of them collaborate it's not just one single person anymore sometimes things are found by accident the most famous one penicillin all right everybody thanks so much for watching i appreciate it if you made it to this point you are uh, you are a legend and i thank you so much please everybody be kind to one another today and um and thank you so much for watching bye let's see what we got outside oh my goodness i shot for 30 minutes that's longer than a sip con nobody's gonna watch this that's okay See, no sun it's been cloudy and right now it's just like a, maybe a, no not even a drizzle that's all i got left to take out for the bulk right here i should do this right now actually just these two three pieces maybe that's all that's left i already took maybe half of this stack out and there was like two stacks over there it's out in the front right now I did want to also pick up some of the sand and put it in an industrial like black bag and then throw that on top of the, the stack that I made. The stack that I made is not even that big. It's not going to be, be as tall as me. But yeah, I'll probably do that. I wanted to wear this kit because it has the name of the uh, corporation, not a uh, oil and natural gas state. This is uh, the equivalent of Amazon but I believe it's based out of, um, if not Europe, Asia. It's called Rakuten. And um, I won't show you the back. Uh, I am gonna search eBay to see if I can find from either the, 
uh, let's say the last season that Guardiola was coach for Barcelona. I want an Andres Iniesta jersey. All right, thanks so much, everybody. You guys have a wonderful day, and peace and love be with every one of you. And um, thank you. <laughs>